the team. <laughs> That's about right. And Jamal Mashburn, they had some players as well. Won the went to the Final Four in '93 and just had an incredible run there at Kentucky, and then certainly in the NBA with the Celtics and the Knicks and at Louisville. This is uh, one of the the great coaches of all time. Has 793 wins in college basketball. And I think you'd have to say that both these teams are defined on the defensive end of the floor. Yeah, Iona certainly will get out and really guard you. They're going to try to put some pressure on you. They want to play at a fast pace. They want to get up and down 94 feet. Yuri Collins, Okoro, little jumper deflected out of bounds. And that'll be off of Terrence Hargrove. And Iona will have their first possession of our contest. Yeah, both these teams score very well. The Billikens averaging 81 points a game. Iona 46 points a game. And Iona's going to try to speed up and turn over the Billikens. And on this end, they're going to want to try to shoot it and share it and love the three. So, yes, they are defined defensively. And that will be a foul against Nelly J.R. Joseph. They love defense, clearly. Travis Ford, Rick Pitino. But both coaches will not shy away from that open three. They're going to tell their guys, hey, if you're open, take that three. There's no question. I think Rick Pitino was one of the the really early adopters of the three-point line when it was first incepted into NCAA. Really changed the way he coached and changed the game and the importance of the three-point line. I think he coined the term the worst shot in basketball is the long two. Use the three-point line or get all the way to the rim. Full court pressure shown by the Gales of Iona. Nesbitt will bring it up the floor for St. Louis U. So Nesbitt, Collins, Okoro all on the floor. Gibson Jimerson with the basketball, the leading score for the Bills, and they turn it over. Here's Joseph up the floor. Pushing off, they let him play. Tip, no good. Ball loose. Okoro has it for St. Louis U. Now Collins. Collins pushing. Hit out of bounds, it'll stay with Slew. Uh, the Billikens' last outing, Yuri Collins had just a tremendous effort against Richmond. 24 points and 8 assists. And he and Jacob Gilliard, two of the best point guards, not just in the A-10, but in the country. Yuri Collins leading the country with just under 8 assists a game. And Collins named the A-10 Player of the Week, Okoro. Backing in his man, double teamed as they collapse on him. Billikens again turn it over. Frustrating start offensively on both sides. Three up left side. Rims in and out. Offensive board inside by Joseph and a foul. And a stoppage in play at 18-26 of our first half. And a substitution already for the Billikens. Lucina Traore coming in. There's a look at the foul. Yeah, Iona's going to shoot it quick. And that time Okoro picks up the foul and Traore... Again, Billikens are going to need the depth of Linson and Traore. They have a three-man rotation at the five spot. Off the glass and good. And the first two is Slezinski, the junior, and a transfer from Louisville. It's amazing the impact that Rick Pitino made immediately with this program. Gibson Jimerson for three, no good. Tipped around. Offensive board for Slu. And they'll get a fresh 20. Yeah, made the tournament in their first year last year. They've made the tournament, NCAA tournament, seven out of the last ten years and made either the NCAA or NIT nine out of the last ten years. So this is a program that's had a lot of success. And an offensive foul. That's three turnovers, Dan, in the paint. Throwing the ball to the post and just sloppy with the basketball. So not an offensive foul. They called a travel on that play. And it's back to Iona. With an early 2-0 lead. Pretty cool to have Rick Pitino here in St. Louis, isn't it? Yeah, again, he's, he's a legend in the game. I, you know, he's, been, he's been everywhere. He's won at every single level. And, uh, you know, he's won national championships both at Kentucky and Louisville. As they get, on the way up was Joseph. I mean, there's not much that he's done. I was talking to a radio analyst for the Billikens, Earl Austin, and we were debating whether if he had stayed at Kentucky in the mid-'90s oh. instead of going to the NBA, he might be the Nick Saban of college basketball. That's how much success and the way they had it rolling, it rubbed. Too strong on the first free throw attempt. The Gales come in, 72% from the free throw line during his 33 previous seasons coming into this one. He is 793 and 279. 
He's got 54 wins in the NCAA tournament. He's taken three different schools to the Final Four, and he's won a national championship at two different schools. The only coach to lay claim to that. Yeah, that that's a pretty good resume. Wow. Well, slew four possessions, three turnovers, 0 for 2 from the floor. A little bit out of sync to start this one as Collins gets it back on the deflection. And Hargrove stepped out of bounds, and it's back to Iona. Yeah, give Iona credit, though. They're doing a good job trying to deny Yuri Collins the basketball so he can't be the playmaker on the offensive end. And they're face guarding Gibson Jimerson, the shooter that averages 16 a game for the Billikens. So they're doing a really good job focusing on the two guys that really create the offense for St. Louis. Parker Weiss is just checked in for Iona. Wearing number four for Iona. Kick it to the right side. And stepping out of bounds was Tyson Jolly. He's a grad transfer from SMU, and their leading score better than 15 a game. Yeah, he was a third-team all-conference player at SMU. Joyner was a grad transfer from Tulsa. Zlozinski, a transfer from Louisville, New Mexico State. John Luis was from New Mexico State. I mean, you see the impact of the transfer portal, Dan, and that extra year of eligibility. It just shows up every time we do a game. John Luis back in the game for Weiss for Iona. Little over three minutes into this one, and the Billikens trying to get some type of rhythm offensively. Trailing 3-0 early on. Collins with it. Backs up to Gibson Jimerson. Puts it on the floor. Trying to feed it inside, and it's hit out of bounds. It'll stay with the Billikens. Off the foot of Joseph. Sometimes when you're a shooter like Jimerson and you haven't had a touch yet, you kind of force one. You get itchy to get a shot up and a little bit of an ill-advised shot, but they get the ball back. There's Collins. Double team finds Fred Thatch. Thatch off the glass. No good. The tip. No good. Gets it back. Back up. Oh, Fred Thatch. That's all effort right there. <laughs> That's a man-sized rebound. Go get your own and finish in traffic. The Gales on the other end. Aaron shot. Ball loose. And the Pelicans get it back. Here's Fred Thatch up the floor for Slew. No one stops him. They let him play. And counted a chance at a three-point play for Fred Thatch coming off the bench. A little jolt of energy from Fred Thatch. Follows up with his offensive rebound and put back with an opportunity for an and one. Good call. The defender was inside that restricted arc and a little bit of instant offense from Fred Thatch. Iona's come out playing very physical, Dan, and and that feeds into the way Fred Thatch likes to play. So I think this might be a game where Travis Ford's going to be able to use him more. So Thatch at the line, a 61% free throw shooter and completes a three-point play. Billikens come in as a team at 75%. Well, that's a far stretch from where they've been the last couple of years in the high 50s. No doubt. And they've grabbed their first lead of the night. It's 5-3. Open look for three, left side, too strong. Tipped, kept alive by the Gales. John Luis, they find the open man, the reverse, and the block inside. Treori. And we'll have our first said that this is his final stop. This is more about a love of the game. He loves to coach and obviously is coached at some of the biggest places you can coach at, but coming through St. Louis now with Iona. Can I... Can I just be honest with you? I don't believe that. <laughs> okay. At least I, I want your honesty. That's good. I, 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 he's he's so good at what he does. I yeah. got to think that in the success that he's already had at Iona, he's going to get other opportunities. Sure. Again, he, but he is he is a New York guy. He's an East Coast guy, and he, he might be very comfortable, but uh, he's going to have opportunities come his way. Billikens keep it alive after the miss by Fred Thatch. And there's Nesbitt. Drawing contact, they let him play. Kept alive, and Fred Thatch on the receiving end. Oh, and they are letting him play. Woo. I mean, a lot of contact at the rim. Along with Scott Highmark, I'm Dan McLaughlin, Iona, and Slowey weren't anticipating this one, but there's a lot of things we haven't been anticipating in college sports the last three years. 
So trying to get a game in, and here we go. Billikins with numbers. Gibson, Jimerson, little ball fake and a foul. And that's going to go against John Louise. The second on John Louise, so that's a key foul for Iona. Gets a lot of minutes for them. What? Collins, Traore coming out for that, Slew. Yeah, that, that is a big foul because John Louise also was the man with the task of guarding Yuri Collins and was doing a terrific job putting pressure on, on Collins. DeAndre Jones in for Slew. He will inbound. Okoro back in as well. Here's Thatch. Provided some quality minutes already off the bench for Slew. Double team. Trying to find his way through. He can't. Ball is loose. Okoro has it. Looking for help. And gets it out to Nesbitt. At midcourt. Seven on the shot clock. Nesbitt. Fade away. Short. And the rebound to Walter Clayton, a freshman out of Lake Wales, Florida. He lost it. Here's Thatch. Thatch leans in, and that'll be an offensive foul. Oh, boy. Oh, boy is right. The defender was certainly not set. And I, Van Eyck was not set at all. And I know what Thatch was trying to do. He was trying to Euro step by him. And he definitely did initiate the contact. I just think the defender's got to be set for that to be a charge. Just over 14 minutes to go here in our first half. Kick it to the corner, three up right side, and knock down. First bucket for Iona in quite some time. Last couple of minutes, it's 7-6 Billikins. Here's Jones, Okoro at the head of the key, hands it off to Thatch. Hargrove picks up his dribble. Now to Gibson Jimerson. Got it back to Strong and take either Hargrove or a Coro. Give it to one or the other, but the putback is good. Tell you what, Billiken's best offense has been a missed shot or yeah. a broken play so far. They have not got much in rhythm, but uh, they're finding ways to put the ball in the basket. Give that to Hargrove, his first two. Five on the shot clock, a little fade away from 10. And that's Ryan Myers, the sophomore out of Brooklyn, New York. You know, with Collins out of the game, Iona's really going to try to pressure DeAndre Jones and try to speed up this Billiken team and force some turnovers. Here's DeAndre Jones spinning in the lane to Gibson Jimerson. 10 on the shot clock, Jimerson. And this will be a foul on Gibson Jimerson. Offensive foul. Bullock is really struggling. A lot of one-on-one play, not sharing the basketball, creating opportunities for their teammates. And they, again, that time, Jimerson just lowers that shoulder and initiates contact. I think that was the right call that time. Joseph will check in momentarily. Hargrove, the block underneath. Kicked out. Wide open look for three. Too strong. Rebound to Yuri Collins of the Billikens. Here comes Collins. Unselfish play here. Hargrove got it tipped. And Iona got it back. They want to run. Here is Clayton. Pulls up. Got it. Walter Clayton. Yeah, that's what Iona wants to do is they want to turn you over and then get out and try to score off of those turnovers. And even 12. Been kind of a wild start for both teams. What have you thought so far? A little sloppy on, on both ends. Uh, Iona really playing physical on the defensive end. Forced seven turnovers by the Billikens, but the Billikens kind of hanging around with seven offensive rebounds and plenty of putbacks on the offensive end, but not a lot of flow offensively, but credit both teams really getting after it on the defensive end well you've got 27 possessions so far combined and 11 turnovers to your point so a yeah. little sloppy but a lot of that is the physical play and defensive play hargrove no short a coral rips it away he's inside 
And he gets it stripped away. And the Gales want to run. Inside. Kicked out. Three up. No good. Okoro the rebound. His fourth of the night. To Yuri Collins. Collins, no good. Okoro has it. Put back, yes. Yeah, Okoro's an elite offensive rebounder. He averages about eight boards a game and about four offensive rebounds per game. He is just terrific attacking the glass. Here's Clayton. Crosses it over. Not looking for help. Fades away and got it. Tough shot. Wow. Walter Clayton, the freshman out of Lake Wales, Florida. Yeah, another thing that Rick Pitino does is he plays a lot of guys. He'll play nine or ten guys, and even when he doesn't have the depth that he wants, and I talked to one of their assistant coaches, Tom Abbott and Marco, before the game, and he said we still probably need a year or two of continuing recruiting, the stack recruiting class on it. But, again, it's almost like hockey. I mean, it's like three or four in. Three or four out. Just the way the next line. Yeah, yeah, it just kind of wears you out. And what they want to do is that, that accumulation of that effort wears on you late in the game. Collins to inbound on the far sideline from our vantage point. As we are situa uh, situated right next to the Gales bench, Collins sees a lane and takes it in, got it blocked, and out of bounds. Not a bad crowd for giving yeah. the uh, folks here in St. Louis about 40 hours notice. Yeah, short notice and a uh, little bit of weather outside. Yeah. Decent crowd. I think people were excited to see uh, Rick Pitino in the house against his uh, protege, Travis Ford. And a good team. It, yeah, two good teams. Hargrove beat the clock, but in and out. Up the floor we go, and a finish by Ryan Myers. Yeah, this Iona team is, is ranked fourth in the uh, College Insider mid-major poll. Another turnover by the Billikens. Billikens can't inbound. They turned it over. And that'll be a stoppage with the referee noticing the shot clock and the clock. Need that to roll over. Jimerson back in for St. Louis U. Iona will make a substitution as well. Tyson Jolly. The grad transfer from SMU is back in. You know, John Louise has had to sit with two fouls for Iona as well, and that's something to keep in mind. A player that gets a lot of minutes for the Gales. Three up, too strong. Tipped, kept alive. And that was Shima. Three up, left side, and that's no good by Myers. And the Billikens get it into the hands of Yuri Collins. Yeah, this is the guy that's going to have to make it work and get the offensive rhythm. But, again, he almost turns it over and almost had their 10th turnover of the game. Hargrove in and out for three. Okoro got it and finished with the left hand. They don't have an answer right now for Okoro on the offensive glass. Well, they, and they don't have much offense other than go get it on the glass. And that's working. Okoro with four points for SLU as they're down by one and just over nine minutes to go in our first half. Here's Joyner. Jolly got it for three. He is their leading three-point shooter. And that's his 19th. On the year, Nesbitt up the floor for SLU, stops in the lane, fades away. The freshman knocks it down. Well, I, this is the guy that, that for the Billikens to make that next leap, they're going to have to get more from Jordan Nesbitt. He's a highly touted top 50 recruit in the country out of St. Louis, and he's got a big upside. Slipping the screen, that was Joyner, but he couldn't finish. Yeah, maybe some contact, but they're letting him go. Nesbitt on the other end. He couldn't finish. And Jolly has it. Iona runs it up the floor. Jolly well short with that. Hargrove there. They've got numbers. Nesbitt, Joyner, the hustle, and what a play. Elijah Joyner, like a wide receiver in football, kept it alive. The toes ran in that game and won at the yeah, very end. I remember that. They shocked him and won by a point. Number two in the country. Yep. That's exactly right. 
sure Coach Patino remembers that one, too. Oh, yeah. Coaches don't forget they those, don't. do they? <laughs> they forget the, the wins, but they do not forget the losses. Nope. Stepping through, and the lefty with a right hand couldn't finish. And that was Quinn Slizinski, the 6'9 junior. And so Slizinski will go to the line. He averages 10 a game. He's from Houston, Texas, and a transfer from Louisville. Well, you get to a point, Scott, for any of these teams. I don't care if you're SLU, you're Iona, you're Harris Stowe, you're Lindenwood. It doesn't matter. you got to start playing games. Yeah. You know, I, the protocols are what they are, and it's unfortunate where we're at. Yep. But you, you get into a rhythm of a season like this time last year where right. the Billikens were top 25 in the country. Yep. They get hit with COVID. They were looking like a tournament team, and all of a sudden, you're, you're back to square one. Yeah, they, they never got it back last year. They had yeah. a 30-day COVID pause and about 40 days in between games. And you're right. It's such a momentum game, a yeah. rhythm game. And if you don't have that rhythm and momentum, it's really hard to get it back. And last year's Billiken team was a great example of that. So very fortunate. Both teams really wanted to play. And it's, it's, it's interesting that people are – coaches are going to Twitter to find games and say, please DM me exact, immediately. Rick Pitino was doing that, and then on the SLU side, timeout taken by Travis Ford. We were talking to their coaching staff before the game. They literally actually like where you're at in the city, in uh, the state. Right. What are the protocols? Is it five or ten days? Right. I mean, what is your conference dictating that right. you do? So it's uh, pretty tough to navigate, no yeah, doubt. I saw the St. Louis U women flew the other night to Fordham, to New York City. Flew the night before, went to shoot around. And about three hours before the game, they got a call from Fordham saying the game was canceled. I mean, it's just brutal. Yeah. And we know that Lisa Stone went through it as much as anybody yeah. last year in college basketball. Sure Iona will have a substitution here. Elijah Joyner back in for the Gales. Yuri Collins will inbound right in front of us. 6.52 to go here in our first half, and it's 21-15 in favor of the Billikens. Nesbitt puts it on the floor, drives, spins, looks for help. He has it. There's Thatch, not a Collins. Got it blocked, and the ball is loose. Strickland kept it alive. Not a Nesbitt. They can't beat the clock. Man, Iona is active on the defensive end. They are physical. They are bumping cutters. Their hands are active. Just the way Rick Pitino coaches it. Yep. Yuri Collins, eerily quiet. Zero points, zero assists here in the first half. At the glass and finishing strong, it's Walter Clayton. He's a good-looking player, only a freshman. He is. 23-15, the Billikens trailing, and the largest lead of the night for the Gales. Collins gets the handoff from Treori and got it blocked again and then steps out of bounds trying to pick up the ball. Yeah, Collins is trying to get in that gap, and he's finding the seam, Dan, but, but Iona's long, and they're physical, and they're coming over with help side defense, and, and he's not able to get that shot off. I think to your point, Scotty, you are seeing a very physical defensive team in Iona. Yeah, and, and that's that's coaching. I mean, it just yep. is. You have to instill that into your guys, and that's what Travis Ford wants to to do as well: is is rebound, defend, be tough. And and again, we've seen Rick Pitino do that for 35 years. That that's one of the the hallmarks of a Rick Pitino team. This is Clayton. Now he hands it off, and the ball is loose. Thatch throws it out of bounds with seven on the shot clock. 5.35 to go in the first half. On the floor for Slu, Hargrove, Nesbitt, Treori, DeAndre Jones, and Fred Thatch. Six, now five at the rim and the finish 
Elijah Joyner. And a timeout taken. Very good Belmont team, which we saw beat St. Louis here on their home court and in Kansas, and also beat number 15 Alabama. So, uh, again, they're not going to be intimidated coming here to St. Louis. And, again, really good pressure and another turnover. And a foul, hard foul there by Thatch. And Rick Pitino loves what he's seeing yep. right now. And Travis Ford's about to lose his mind. He's like purple. He's so upset. <laughs> he tried to take Yuri Collins out for a possession. And they immediately turn it over against the pressure, and back he comes. Dylan Van Eyck, transfer from Northeast Oklahoma A&M. Parker Weiss coming out of the game. You know, you also got you got grad seniors like Van Eyck, who's a fifth-year senior, and Tyson Jolly's a fifth-year senior. Elijah Joyner's a fifth-year senior. That matters when you've got 23, 24-year-old men playing against 18, 19-year-olds. That that matters. Slew at 12 turnovers in the first half, Scotty. They're averaging 12.8 yeah. a game. Yeah. That Travis Ford's not going to be happy with that. Nice curl move. Jimerson, see if that can get him going a little bit. 26-17 in favor of Iona. Gales will weave out front. Here's Joyner, pulls up, open look, knocks it down. Foot was on the line, it looked like. That's a two, and he's got four. Yeah, they, they run good stuff, too, on the yep. offensive end. They get good motion, good rhythm. They move. They share it. They shoot it. Jimerson Good to recovery. Nesbitt. Well, you're right. I mean, Gibson Jimerson was open for a brief second, no. and they're right on him. I mean, they were sprinting, and the whole bench was yelling, shooter, shooter in the corner. I mean, the recovery, again, that's part of that scout, part of that's coaching, and a lot of that's just desire. So Nesbitt at the line. 65% free throw shooter. Billikens one for one from the free throw line. And that was Thatch's free throw to complete a three point play earlier in the contest. 427 to go. And the Billikens trying to cut this to single digits. And that'll do it. 28 19. A little different look here, shown by the Billikens yep. defensively. Yep, a little matchup zone. The Coro back in, banging bodies inside with Joseph. They hand it off, three up left side, too strong. Collins trying to box out. But a mismatch underneath with Dylan Van Eyck, 6'8 against Collins. Yeah, and sometimes what happens when you go to a zone, you've got that weak side defender. You had Yuri Collins down there on Van Eyck trying to box him out. A little bit of a mismatch, and they exploited it. Boy, they fight through the screens to make sure that Gibson Jimerson does not get a free look. Yeah, they cut it. They bump. The big man steps up. But nice pass. And Okoro finishes at the rim. And that's what you do. You, if, you, if, if you're the shooter, you curl, they come out, they bump you and match you, you find the roll man. The crowd trying to get back into this one. There's Fred Thatch. To Gibson, Jemerson leans in, finishes. Timeout taken, Rick Pitino and Iona. Happening probably all season long, yeah. but mid to late January, maybe even into February, where you get non-conference opponents right. playing each other. So yeah. this this makes it fun. It is. It's very unusual to, to get into January and see matchups like this, but I, I think you're going to see more and more of it, and teams know that they've got to be flexible and, and adapt to get the number of games that they need to get in and to keep the rhythm that you talked about. Heading to the line will be Tyson Jolly got his man up in the air and he'll shoot a pair good free throw shooter at 73 percent and you don't want to when you're doing that Dan you're scrambling for games you don't want to just play anybody either you want a good quality opponent and obviously Iona is that 
ranked number four in the College Insider mid-major poll. Made the tournament last year, got an experienced team. But uh, when, when you have to scramble and make these games up, if you're St. Louis or you're Iona, you want a quality opponent that's going to help you get better and, and launch you right back into conference play, which Travis Ford, you know, is, is of the highest importance for Travis Ford at this time of year. Ball is loose after the miss, kept alive underneath, and the Billikens have it. It's Yuri Collins. And a whistle. Fisher will come over to the. So the official coming over to the scores table, and again they had a, a brief message about the uh, the shot clock, and it's at 27. Once it was in possession of the Billikens, it starts to roll. Billikens next game Tuesday at Dayton, one of the harder places to play oh, yeah. in the A10, and always has been. Yep, they've they've beaten. Kansas earlier this year, so they've got another quality team there. There's Collins, man-to-man. -man. Iona has been all game long. Nesbitt has a man in the corner but doesn't shoot it to him. That was Hargrove. He was open. And another turnover forced here. Iona's done that all night long. Yeah, their help side defense is uh -huh. great. They help each other. They, they communicate. They talk. Joiner picks it up, little ball fake, put on the floor by Jolly, then the block, and now Collins. Here comes Slew. Just over two minutes to play here at Chaffetz Arena in Midtown St. Louis. Hargrove with it, back to Collins. Thought about shooting it, mismatch out in front with Collins. He knows that, backs it up. He'll try the three, deep three, and hit it. He was matched up there with Shima. You can tell he's a little hesitant to let it fly, but then he let it fly. Yeah, he was patient, and that's a shot that he wouldn't have made last year. He's shooting 36% from the three-point line, certainly respectable, and now you got to honor that. Lead is cut to five. At one point, Iona had a double-digit lead. The crowd trying to get back into this. Short, loose. Joyner got his own board back in a fresh 20 for the Gales. Van Eyck, under 10 on the shot clock, just over a minute to play. Deep three, very deep, and the miss. Yuri Collins has it. He's got four boards for St. Louis U. Collins steps through, late whistle and a foul. 102 to play here in the first half. Well, you see what happens when Yuri Collins knocks down the, the three-pointer. Then the next play, they have to come out, give him a little bit more pressure, and he does the blow by and gets to the free throw line. So just being able to keep a team honest by able to knock down that shot creates the lane for him to get to the free throw line. So Collins is 71% free throw shooter, young man out of St. Mary's High School here in St. Louis. This young man had 19 assists, Dan, against Boston College. Is that good? 19. That's I pretty mean, darn that's good. Ridiculous. And he's just got incredible feel. Struggling a bit tonight, but his feel and vision is just something you just can't teach. And that's exactly, I mean, Iona, you could tell, has been schooled well going into this game and looking at tape. I don't care if it's been 40 hours. Oh, they're on it. They're all <laughs> over him. Yep. And they're all over Gibson Jemerson. Yep. I mean, they know. Yeah. No. And, and we've seen every, we've seen every game. And, and I have not seen a team defend Collins and Jimerson as well as no. Iona has in the first half. No, I agree. Keep an eye on Collins. He was shaking that right hand. Remember, he's had issues yeah. with the hand and the wrist. As the crowd comes alive, nearly a steal there for, Mizzou, uh, for Slew. Tipped and out of bounds. Iona beat Alabama, as Scott mentioned earlier. Mizzou beat Alabama earlier today. And they they did. had Missouri on my mind there just for a yeah, second. So they, that was a big win for the Tigers and Conzo Martin. Yep, they needed that. They had their own COVID pause. And coming off that with fresh legs, you never know how you come off one of those pauses, and they got a big win. Ten on the shot clock. Slazinski gives it up. Billikins have picked it up defensively. Short, well short 
with the three. Ball loose. Shot clock violation. Back to Slew. I'll tell you what, the last couple minutes, Iona looks totally out of sorts on the offensive end. Credit the Billiken defense, but Iona's not getting anything north and south at the basket. Everything's east and west around the perimeter. Osborne Shima will check in for Iona. And Nelly Junior Joseph, the sophomore out of Nigeria, will have a seat here. Slew could play for the final shot here. Difference of 1.9 seconds, game clock, shot clock. Nesbitt gets the inbound from Hargrove and then calmly into the hands of Yuri Collins. And, and Rick Pitino just screaming at Walter Clayton, do not leave this guy, Jimerson. He's pointing at Jimerson. He's like, do not leave him. Stay with him the whole time. And he's about at, maybe he, a step away from him. He's pointing at Clayton and saying, do not leave him. He's supposed to set it five times. Seven. Six. We're down to five on the shot clock. Here is Collins. Nice feed. Okoro couldn't finish. Got it back off the glass and foul. With .6 seconds remaining here in the first half of play. That was a great what look. a feed. Yeah, that was a fantastic look. Thread the needle by Yuri Collins. Okoro probably should have had the bucket and one, but gets the opportunity to go to the line. Akora with six for Slew. And now seven. He's a pretty good free throw shooter at 73%. He's got nine rebounds here in this yeah. first half. And a lot of that coming on the offensive end. James will come in. Trey James, he wears number 50. First time he's seen the floor. Replaces Shima. Could have been a violation, but no. They let it go. And that'll do it. The first half will come to a close. The Billikens at one point down by double digits. Part in the uh, coaching career of Rick Pitino on the far sideline in his former point guard that helped turn things around in Kentucky in Travis Ford. And now he's facing him on the other sideline as that coach at Slew. It's, yeah. it's very fun. It is. It's, it's fun for both sides. And I know Rick Pitino is super proud of what Travis Ford's done. And in his 25 years as a head coach. Hard to believe Travis Ford's been coaching 25 years as a head coach. Well, the Billikens now, with their first possession here of this second half, a chance to take the lead against Iona. They were down by double figures in the first half. Hargrove hands it off to Nesbitt for the lead. In and out. And the rebound to Elijah Joyner. The same starting five on both sides. Crowd settling back in their seats here at Chaffetz Arena. Joyner kicks it to the open man. That's Jolly. No. Collins. Nesbitt got it blocked on the way up. It's standing over goodness. him. It was Tyson Jolly to let him know who got him. Oh, my goodness. Check this out, folks. Let me meet you at the summit. Holy smokes. That was sweet block by Tyson Jolly. I know the Billiken fans wanted a foul, but that was all ball. And the Gales get it back. Inside it goes on the block, spinning and off the glass in a good move. Nelly Jr. Joseph. Yeah, that really was a nice move. 6'9", 240. Hit 28 points against Harvard. Has three double-doubles already. Hargrove. Nesbitt. Got it! Nesbitt is tied it. Seven for the freshman. Yeah, they got to get some long balls to go down to free up and find some spacing on the offensive end. Blocked twice on the way up. And it's going to be a Billiken basketball, and that'll get uh, this crowd into a technical foul. And Rick Pitino wants an explanation. A technical foul on Tyson Jolly. And Nesbitt, Hargrove, Collins trying to get the fans fired up. You know where that, that, that technical foul started? when Jolly blocked yes. Nesbitt yes. and started talking some smack, and then this was kind of round two of it. If, if that hadn't happened the prior play, he wouldn't get called a technical foul. 
Jimerson, an 89% free throw shooter. And with that, the Billikens have their first lead, Scott Highmark, since they led 10-9 to with an even 12 minutes to go of the first half. Hits them both. Well, we'll see which team gets fired up off of that technical. It's always interesting to see who kind of really feeds off of that energy. Does does Iona kind of buckle down and and really get back into the flow that they had, or do the Billikens carry the momentum they had to close the half? Off his screen, Joyner fouled, and that's inside the arc, and he'll shoot a pair, and that'll go against Jerry Collins. Yeah, just, nice. Collins thinking that he was kicking out. Yeah, he might have been a little bit, but that's just a tough. It's a tough shot to begin with, so don't foul a shooter when they're shooting a tough shot. Don't bail them out by even getting close enough where you they can make that call. So Joyner at the line hits the first. Oh, and Joyner's a veteran. I mean, he's a fifth-year grad senior. He knows how to find his way to the line. He's had a tough shooting night. 2 of 10 from the floor, 0 of 5 from the three-point territory. 1 of 2 now from the free throw line, the miss offensive board, and that'll be a foul on Okoro. Now, there is no such thing, by the way, as over the back, as you well know. <laughs> there is such a thing as a push. A push. Yes. That's so cool. technically over the back is not the call, but right. you could be pushed, the, yeah. which when you push a lot of times you're, you're over, over the back. back. Right. That's what we used to call it on the playground, right? <laughs> right. But you knew that, of course, didn't you, Scott? I did know that, but thank you for reminding me. The stickler for those rules. You are. And another foul on this possession. And that'll send Joseph to the line, and he's rubbing the top of his head. He may have taken an elbow to the head. And Joseph is a 68% free throw shooter. Hits the first. This is turning out to be a very long and extended possession with a lot of chances yeah. here for Iona. Got them both. And they're back on top. Here comes the pressure. And Jean-Louis, oh, getting in the corner. You got to get out there. You got numbers if you want it. Hargrove spinning, stripped away by Joyner. What a great defensive effort. Anticipated the spin move. And Joyner, a tough shot. Leaning in, a little runner off the glass. And Joyner has seven for the Iona Gales. I'll tell you what, this is the matchup to watch. John Luis guarding Yuri Collins because he picked up those two personals, but he is an outstanding defender. And if he can really buckle down and, and stop Yuri Collins, it's going to be hard for St. Louis to get any rhythm. Now, Scotty, that's 6'4 and long length against six foot Yuri Collins. Yep. Three up, Hargrove. Yes! Terrence Hargrove is tied it at 38. Joiner the other way. Looking for help. Another floater. Too strong. Push off inside. No call. They let him play. And Joseph there to clean it up. Billikins run. They answer. Gibson Jemerson. And he's got eight, the leading score for the Bills. Yeah. How about that pass by Yuri Collins? About 70 feet right on the money. Now we're getting some flow. Yep. Pretty good athletes on the floor right now, too. Inside on the block, and it is blocked. Okoro, Collins, though, got it knocked away by Joyner, and he's called for the foul, and he'll come out. Four new players for Iona. Thatch, Traore coming in for Slu. Players trying to get a little breather here. And that's to your point of Rick Pitino throwing waves yeah. of players at you. Yeah, that's what, he's always wanted to do that and, and throw different, like as you said, waves, almost like a hockey line, and just try to wear you down with the pressure. And where that shows up usually is in the last five minutes of yes. the game with your legs and your jump shot. Just about four minutes into the second half, Collins. They are hounding him. They are making him work for everything. Collins takes it in. He's bumped. That'll go against Osborne Shima. Osborne Shima. 
First personal on Shima. 16.06 to play here in our ball game. Collins to the line. And Yuri gets the first. Eyes up the second and hits them both. Get the feeling this could be back and forth here in the second half, Scotty. Yeah, it doesn't feel like either team's going to get much separation the way this one's going. So a two-point lead now for the Bills. Number of lead changes here in the second half. There's Jolly, and it goes inside to Shima. Work, work! Traore matched up with Shima, picks up his dribble, looking for help. And does finally get it. Two on the shot clock. Rattles out. Did everything but go down. It's tied up underneath. The offensive board by Jolly. And that'll be a foul. Gone 11 of 11. And they've not shot the ball that well, but that's really kept them in the game. And they're up by two. That's exactly right. And they lead the A-10 in, in both free throws made and free throw attempts. So that's part of their identity is getting to the line and capitalizing once they get there. This to tie it as Jolly hits him both. 73% free throw shooter. Held in check, their leading scorer coming into play. He's got six points. And he comes in averaging 15. Nesbitt, Collins, Traore, Thatch, Gibson, Jimerson on the floor. The five for St. Louis U. Just about five minutes into this second half. Jolly is all over Gibson Jimerson. Collins, and he'll be fouled with four on the shot clock by Barrick John Louise and Joyner checking back in for the Gales. John Louise coming out. That's his third. He's been in foul trouble now in this game, yeah. and again, that's, you know, about, I would say, six minutes into the first yeah. half, he had two, and now he picks up his third five minutes into the second half. Yeah, Keep he, that in mind. Absolutely. And he's, and he's the best option to put on Collins, and Collins got a mismatch right here. And and Collins he recognizing that, but did have the shot altered, hit out of bounds with nine on the shot clock, and 14.55 to play. Yuri Collins will inbound for Slu. Underneath, Nesbitt got it blocked on the way up. Five on the shot clock. Hangs in the air. Doesn't go down. It's loose. And stepping on the baseline, Osborne Shima. It stays with St. Louis U. I mean, they are letting him go. Yep. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of contact around that basket, but they've been consistent all night long, so you just got to go with it. Joseph back in the game for Iona. Collins, as the Bills have a fresh 20 now on the shot clock. Thatch off the inbound. Gibson, Jimerson puts it on the floor. Leans in, tough shot. Gibson, Jimerson, Billikens back on top. And Gibson now with 10 for the Bills. Yeah, that's another one of those shots that he would not have even attempted last year that he worked on in the offseason. A little mid-range, a little up and under. 10, 12 footer makes him so dangerous. There's Joyner. Fans wanted to travel, they didn't get it, but they did get the miss. Collins wants to push with numbers to the corner. Nesbitt for three. He hit it, but he stepped out of bounds. Oh, oh, talk about momentum killer. Well, they. You know, with that line, you've got to really watch it in those corners and watch your feet, but that's just unfortunate by Nesbitt. And Ryan Myers into the ball game for Walter Clayton for Iona as they just keep, it's like interchangeable parts right now for the Gales. In and out they go of their lineup. And the Gales trying to figure out what they're in here offensively. Yeah, again, when they when they sub and they go that deep on the bench, they lose some continuity on offense for sure. So Joyner picks it up. Not a jolly. Jolly against Nesbitt. Leans in off the glass. Got it. We're tied at 44. Uh, 
you see why Jolly is their leading scorer. He, he's pretty crafty with the basketball. Iona pressuring all the way. Nesbitt falls down, gets back up. Curly Neal would be proud. <laughs> I heard a Curly Neal reference in a while. I don't think we've ever had one on a slew broadcast. No. He's not still on the circuit, is he? Globetrotters are everywhere, my man. They are. Four on the shot clock. Gibson Jemerson beats the clock. The miss. Ball loose. And that'll be a foul on Nesbitt on a loose ball. And it's the second. On Jordan Nesbitt, the freshman. Crowd does not like that, Dan. You know, you get a loose ball, and if you know that Iona or the opposition is going to get the ball, right. the 50-50, right. it's almost like let the foul go. Well, and as physical as this game's been, that's a little bit of a ticky-tack foul in the open court. Put on the floor by Jolly, and... A push. And that's against the Billikens. Nesbitt, so he picks up yeah. two in a span of about 10 seconds. And Terrence Hargrove has to come in. Yeah, Jolly's just a veteran grad senior going right at the freshman. And Nesbitt's going to sit down just for a second and gather himself a bit. Off the inbound, ball loose. Gibson, Jimerson diving for it. Also on the floor was Myers. And Rick Pitino, he is hot. He's <laughs> saying, no, I can't believe it. Yeah. It's got to be our ball. Let's see here. He's saying, it's got to be our ball. Yeah, see, I think that went off Jimerson. They can't review it because it's not the last two minutes, and Pitino <laughs> lost his mind. He's like, why am I still doing this for a living? Right. Made enough money. I don't yeah, need this headache. Exactly. And now a whistle away from the basketball <laughs> is Gibson Jimerson. I mean, it's been all night trying to fight through a screen, yeah. and he has been battling, and that's yeah. the first time I can remember they've called that. Again, uh, I don't want to say it was a makeup call, but it feels like it might have been. Yep. So Clayton back in for Iona. Back out. It'll be Myers. And the bodies just keep coming in and out. Yeah. Well, the question is, at will that wear on the Billikens yeah. late in the game? Because Iona is using a lot of bodies. They've been a very physical game. Will that wear down the Billikens and their legs and their decision-making late in the game? Slazinski, the steal. Ooh, what a pass, but they couldn't finish at the rim, and Collins has it for Slew. At the head of the key, he lost it. Boy, that's a rare instance in which you see him lose the handle like that. Yeah, it really is. It's just one of those games right now for him. Yep. And that, that's where you wonder about fatigue. He has not had a lot of rest. There's not really a good backup point guard option for the Billikens for extended minutes. And, and sometimes you get a little tired, a little fatigued mentally. Scotty, the Billikens have turned it over 16 times in this game and we still have 12 minutes and 15 seconds to go. And yep. that's Unlike what the Billikens normally play like. Yeah. To the corner. Gibson, Jimerson couldn't finish. And Joseph picked up the miss for Iona. Clayton, a little weave here at the top with Weiss. Joseph picks up his dribble. Deep three and got it. That's a big three. Quinn Slizinski, the transfer from Louisville. And it puts the Gales up by three. Treori hands it off to Gibson Jemerson. Puts it on the floor. Now leans in. He's fouled and count it. Big bucket for the Bills. Pro shooter. He's 2 of 2 from the free throw line. 5 of 10 from the floor. He's got a game high 12 for Slu. And now 13. And with that, it's tied at 47 with 11.23 to go. 
Both teams with a pair of timeouts. And six fouls apiece here in this second half. Here's Jolly matched up with Fred Thatch. And Jolly against Thatch. That ain't an easy task right saying, there, my man. You don't see many guys kind of eye up Fred Thatch, go right at him, jump over him, and shoot it. That was pretty impressive by Jolly. Here's Gibson Jimerson to hand it off to Yuri Collins. Good luck to Okoro, and he's fouled on the way up, and he'll shoot a pair. Good patience by Yuri Collins on the pick and roll, and just waited and waited until he had the right angle. Watch him come off. He doesn't throw it right away. Waits, waits, sees him, delivers it right on the money. Well, resting comfortably at home, one of our favorites, normally the public address announcer here at Chaffetz Arena, Guy Phillips, who's a fixture in town on the radio airwaves. But Guy Phillips has had a knee transplant, so he is watching the telecast on ESPN+. And, Guy, we're thinking about you tonight and can't wait to see you back here at Chaffetz very soon. And Get healthy, take care of that knee, get that wheel going, and I'm sure you'll be running your 8 to 10 miles a day like you normally do very soon. Well, we miss hearing his voice, and I think he's like a scratch golfer too. So uh, he's got lots of reasons to come back. Collins, the outlet by Thatch. Now to Gibson, Jemerson for three. In and out, Thatch wow. the rebound. Oh, and it got taken away in midair by Tyson Jolly. We got some athletes Woo. on the floor tonight. Wow. Iona by one with just over 10 to go. Yeah, you said it earlier. It does not feel like either team's going to get much margin. The alley oop, the feet inside, and a block by Okoro. He thought he got all ball, and that will send Nelly Jr. Joseph to the line to shoot a pair. And that's three on a Coro. And a lot of that, I, I feel, Scotty, is that just no team, neither team is really in a rhythm offensively. Yeah. It's yeah. disjointed, and yeah. they're just getting after it. Yeah, it is. And, and, and the officials have tightened it up a bit here in the second half. First half, kind of anything wins. Second half, definitely calling it a bit tighter. And sometimes when you get a lot of whistles, it's kind of hard to get any flow. Iona by two. Now the full court pressure after every make. Collins gets it. Up the floor he goes and got it blocked. Well, he's been blocked probably four or five times tonight. Yeah, he's getting to the rim. He might want to think about pulling up just before he gets to the rim. Numbers, and they couldn't finish. Nesbitt fouled on the way up after the miss by Fred Thatch. 9.39 to go and a two-point lead for the Gales of Iona. And the first is up and good by Nesbitt. He's got eight points tonight. John Luis is back into the ball game, and now he's got three fouls with 9.39 to play. And Nesbitt a chance to tie it. And he does. We're tied at 50 with 9.39 to go. That's seven ties in this game. Nesbitt, Okoro, Collins, Jimerson, and Fred Thatch on the floor for SLU. Joiner off the handoff. A look inside. And a call late with the whistle to shoot two will be Quinn Slazinski. Yeah, that was good patience up by Iona. They found the mismatch. Slazinski at six foot nine had Yuri Collins down on the post and Nice job by Joyner finding him. And he hits the first. 
this Iona team is third in the country, Dan, in free throw attempts. So they also know how to get to the line. Yeah. And the second is good. Slazinski with nine for Iona. Weave up top for Slu. Jimerson. Back door to Collins. Got it blocked. That's try to save it. Gales come the other way. Three is up too strong. And Yuri Collins has his fifth rebound. Now to Thatch. Leaves it for Gibson Jimerson. Ball fake. Somebody's got to be open. Okoro. And they'll just reset with Collins. Pretty good recovery, though. You, you mentioned yeah. that earlier. I mean, as soon as you think Jimerson is open, he's not. And they are running at him. And Billikens got to reverse that basketball quick. Okoro ties it at 52. Francis Okoro in double figures. And that's a double-double. 11 points, 11 boards with 8.20 to play. Fun ball game. Mm -hmm. Sure is. The eighth tie in this game. Too strong inside. Jolly got it blocked. Okoro hit out of bounds. It'll stay with the Gales. Shima to check in for Iona. Tied at 52 with Scott Highmark. I'm Dan McLaughlin. A-10 basketball on ESPN+. Plus. Ball fake. Lean in and a foul. Well, as much as they've been letting him go to box, he's done a nice job being a rim protector for the Billikens. Hargrove will come in for Thatch. The Billikens down by one with Scott Highmark. I'm Dan McLaughlin. You're watching the A-10 on ESPN+. Plus. And that is good. Hit by Slazinski. He's in double figures along with Jolly. Slazinski with 11 points for Iona. They'll clear out for Collins to bring it up the floor. John Louise on him. Knocked out of bounds. So that's the reach I'm talking about. He's 6'4", Collins 6 foot. Yeah, he's got good length and size. He's just got the look of a group, tremendous defender, this John Louise. Nelly Jr. Joseph in for Iona. Osborne Shima coming out. And the other thing about John Louise is he wants to guard, you know. Yeah. You, some guys have all the makeup, but you, you got to want to do it. You got to enjoy really getting after people. Okoro finds Collins. And Collins looking for a little seam. Has a mismatch there. Down to two on the shot clock. And the Billikens will turn it over. Couldn't get a shot away. It's a two-point lead for Iona. Joiner, John Louise, 7.20 to go. In the lane, Jolly, nice move against Nesbitt. He's a good player. Yeah, he's crafty. He is crafty. That was a set play out of the timeout by Rick Pitino. He's got 12, and the lead is opened up to four. Under seven to go. Here's Collins. Under 10 on the shot clock. Collins, a ball fake, lost it, and then off his shin. Tried to pick it up and out of bounds. Not a very good possession there for the Billikens. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to be critical on Yuri Collins because he does so much, but tonight he's maybe over-penetrating just a bit. Penetrate, get in the lane, and then jump stop two feet, make a play. Little zone this time by the Billikens. Slazinski, the yeah. ball fake, yep. open look, oh. missed it. Lucky. Yes. That's he, a big miss. One of their best shooters got a wide open look. 
Lead is at four. Gibson Jimerson at the elbow to Okoro. Working inside, Francis Okoro couldn't get it to drop. Did everything but get the bucket to fall. And some anxiousness now here at Chaffetz Arena. Nesbitt matched up with Jolly. Jolly, the grad transfer against the freshman. Back door, ooh, right through the hands of Slizinski. Good feed, just right through his yeah. hands. Yeah, good idea, and a missed opportunity by Iona. I mean, with a four-point lead, you got the ball. It, you know, you get a six-point lead, you stretch it to eight. That feels like a lot in this game. And now Joyner's going to pick up his fourth on Nesbitt. Rick Pitino talking to Joyner there about that foul he really didn't have an argument with the official more an explanation yeah. with his young uh, yeah. player yeah he was teaching Joyner hey you can't have a hand on a guy right in the middle of the court but it's fun to watch Rick Pitino coach I mean this guy I mean this guy's got as much passion as he did 30 years ago the yeah I just loves it you can just tell so Nesbitt at the line nine points four of four from the free throw line and now five of five the Billikens 16 of 17 from the free throw line in this game. It's outstanding. And this young man, again, we talk about high ceiling. This kid, he has the potential of a kind of kid, the makeup. He could be an all-league performer before it's all said and done as Billiken. And the second is good. Cuts a lead to two. Full court pressure by the Bills. Pulling it back, it is Joyner. John Louise out of Lehigh Acres, Florida with the basketball. Against Hargrove. Joseph. With just over five to play, and the lead is at four. Here's Collins, and that'll be on the floor to foul with 5.09 to play. Billikens, nine fouls. Iona now, 10. John Louise, that's his fourth personal. Collins to the line. And he hits it. I mean, the three throws without question. Really keeping the Billikens tight. 18 of 19 as a team. And Collins with his eighth point. Perfect from the free throw line tonight. 19 of 20 are the Bills. Just over five to play. And a lead of two. Weiss, Joyner, and a late whistle and a foul on Okoro, and he's frustrated. Uh, he needs to be careful because he swatted the ball away, and certainly don't want to take a, pick up a technical. That'll be his fourth. Well, you see Zelensky goes right up, and Okoro, yeah, I mean, he's, he's vertical. You have the right to, to, to the, the rule of verticality. You can be straight up and down, and... He didn't go at Lazinski. Lazinski initiated the contact, so I think I agree with young Francis Okoro there. Slazinski with 12 points, 7-7 seven seven from the free throw line. Yeah, he's a nice player, 6'9", can shoot it, gets to the rim. Very versatile. Hits them both. Full court pressure again. Collins gets the inbound easily. And Barrick... John Louise guarding Collins with four personal. Collins turned it over. John Louise hands it off. The three is up too strong. Hargrove picks up the miss. Now Nesbitt leans in and he'll shoot a pair. 
Love how Nesbitt just attacks. If he gets in the open floor, he's going right at the rim. He's going to spin. He's going to create contact. Put some pressure on the officials to make a call. Nearly four minutes for the Billikens. Three minutes, 58 seconds since their last field goal. Clayton will check in. Coming up for Iona. Nesbitt at the line. It's the first. I keep bringing up the point, but free throw shooting is doing it right now for the Bills offensively. And this to pull within two. Knock down another one. Crowd trying to come alive a bit. Billikins 21 of 22 from the free throw line. Nesbitt making those two as 13. Clayton has it between the circles. On the block, Joseph against Okoro. Knowing he's got foul trouble, it's tipped. Hargrove has it. Hargrove inside, no. Laid whistle again and a foul with 4.03 to go. Well, when the Billikens get it out, off the defensive glass, Dan, they are running, getting out in the lanes, and they're just attacking. They're just going right at the rim. And you saw it with Nesbitt, and then Hargrove does a little bit of the same. Another trip to the line. Dylan Van Eyck will check in. Coming up, Hargrove hits another free throw. He's got six. Billikins 22 of 23 from the charity stripe. We'll Lazinski is out. We'll have to check the record books. I mean, that's got to be pretty close to... A percentage wise, a yeah. Percentage, yeah. They've tied it up. 60 all. Full court pressure. Ooh, Collins trying to sneak in from behind. Hargrove knocked it out of bounds. And this crowd, ball. And we're tied at 60 with Scott Highmark. I'm Dan McLaughlin. A-10 basketball on ESPN+. Every possession big here down the stretch. Under four minutes to play. Joseph to Jolly. Thought about the three. Van Eyck. He'll try the three. Nobody boxed out, though, John Louise, and he couldn't put it back in. Now Collins wants to run. Yuri Collins all the way and fouled. The last lead for St. Louis U was at 44-42 to at 14-39, and now we have 328 to play. That could change with this free throw. That's, right. That's John Louise's fifth personal foul so he'll be done for the evening and not happy about that but great job by Yuri Collins knowing that and leaning his shoulder in and Luis will have to go to the bench so Ryan will come in Walter Clayton coming out also Joyner back in and Collins at the line. Collins gets the first. Billikens 24 of 25. And now Yuri in double figures with 10 points. And they have made him work for every single yeah. point tonight. I don't care if it's a free throw, they but really, he has worked tonight. They really have made him work. And he showed what kind of player he is, but... And how valuable he is yeah. to the Bills, too. Yeah, absolutely. Credit Iona, though. They've put different defenders at him. They've been physical. They've mixed up their defenses a bit. And it's, it's been a tough tough go for Yuri. So the Billikens have the lead by two. Jolly with it. Nesbitt on him. Inside they go against Okoro. And they lose it on the way up. That was Joseph. And the Billiken fans, some of them to their feet. Yeah, it was a great job by Okoro, just walling up, being strong, and, and, and not fouling. 
Hargrove with a big three earlier. Now to Collins. Lost it. Kept it. Looking for help. Eight on the shot clock. In and out, but there's Nesbitt. He's wide open. Let's it fly. No. Inside. Akaro. Oh, what a big bucket that is. What a possession it was. <laughs> How about the energy in this building? And a timeout. Iona. One of the biggest possessions of the night. Yeah, you're exactly right. This is a big one. They've they got to get a shot that they want. Expect Jolly or Joyner to either be the creator or the shot maker. Tough Ugh. shot and they answer underneath. Slazinski, Nesbitt, sees a lane, leans in and lost it on the way up. It's hit out of bounds. And Rick Pitino, he wants them to go to the video and check that. I thought that initially was off the leg of Nesbitt. Could have been, but we're not under two. Yep. So they can't check it. Hargrove got it blocked, wow. hits the deck. They let him play. Man, there's a lot of contact there. I can see that from where we were. The chance to tie or take the lead for Iona. Slazinski's got a mismatch with Collins if they can recognize it. Slazinski against Collins here. They do recognize. Now trying to back in his man. Collins working against him, fading away short. Okoro has it. 145 to go. Collins to Gibson. Jemerson missed a wide open three. The putback is no good by Hargrove. Well, Dan, you get that rebound. If you're Hargrove, pull it you back. can pull back out, work some clock. Just because you got an offensive rebound doesn't mean you have to shoot it. And a timeout taken. Point guard and Travis Ford, the head coach of the Billikens of SLU. Two very good teams. And Travis Ford puts Fred Thatch in specifically to guard Zlazinski to take away that mismatch. Collins all over Joyner. And then they switch out on that. There is a mismatch there if they go there. Jolly and a foul on Nesbitt. And that'll be his fourth. And uh, Travis Ford clearly not happy with that. Well, Jolly was, was searching for it, trying to find an angle. Goes up. Got a lot of ball at the top. Maybe a little bit of body. But again, as, as you said, Dan, this has been a physical game. Wow. Yeah, you'd expect that to be a play on. But again, Jolly, he's a vet. He knows how to get to the line. Iona, they are 18 of 23 from the free throw line. The Billikens have had 26 attempts. They're 25 of 26. So both teams yeah. have shot a lot in the free shot throw it well. line. Yeah. Rattled the second one home. Got them both, and we're tied at 64. Collins. And a big possession here for SLU. Yep, this is the guy. Expect them to run, run a little high ball screen or something to get Collins getting downhill. Collins to Gibson, Jemerson, Jemerson. And it's stripped away. And this is what you were talking about earlier, Scotty, where you get the basket pretty quick if you can't get something right off the out-of-bounds. Collins to inbound. Nesbitt. Gibson, Jemerson, Thatch, Okoro all there. Under 10 on the shot clock. Nesbitt spinning. Tough shot. Go! He got it! Off the glass! And the Billikens have the lead. What a tough shot by the freshman. Clutch. He's got 15. And the crowd on their feet. Parrott Chaffetz. Defender that was Nesbitt fell down. Meyer steps back for the lead and got it as he hit the three. Iona by one, 31.9 to go. Thatch all the way in and got it blocked. No call, they let him play. And quickly a foul by Nesbitt with 23.7 seconds remaining. That was an incredible block by Junior Joseph. Yeah, Fred Thatch had an incredible opportunity to go right at the rim, and you don't see many times where he doesn't finish that. But Junior Joseph comes out of nowhere, gets enough of the basketball, no call, 
And now Iona has a chance to extend this to a three-point lead. A lot of basketball left. 23 seconds is a long time. Even if you're down three, Dan, you don't have to have a three. You can get a quick two if you're St. Louis. Jolly, five of six from the free throw line, misses the first. A game high, 16 tonight for Iona. Okay, so now. That's if, big. That could yep. have made it if he made that and this yep. a three point lead and a possession in which yep. then you figure out do you want to foul? Oh, okay. He missed them both. Right. Collins has it. And the Billikens could potentially win it. I expect Collins to come off this high ball screen, try to get downhill, and get a foul. Collins. Jemerson. No. Put back. Yes. Fred Thatch with 9.1. And the Billikens have a one-point lead. Iona out of timeouts. All the way in. Joiner. No. Put back. No. The game is over. The Billikens win it. They win it. 68-67.